Okay, everybody, welcome to the Fizz video. I am Mr. Gazda, and uh, today, other than watching Minerals Fizz, um, the main concept behind this will be surface area. Now, you may be watching this um, as part of uh, a lab to get caught up, um, Station 1, or maybe you're watching this just because you really want to see Minerals Fizz, or you really want to learn about surface area, but uh, either way, here we go. So. I'm going to jump right in here. Here I have the mineral calcite and I have some hydrochloric acid uh, that I'm going to drop on there and hopefully we can see this fizz. Here we go. Oh, you see that quite good. That's very good. Now, so calcite reacts with acid and you see it as it fizzes. Okay, I'll take that away. And now moving in another mineral, and this is a piece of the mineral dolomite. I'm waiting for the camera to focus on it. There we go. Okay, I'm going to drop acid on dolomite. There's acid in my dropper here. And you can see dolomite did not fizz. So let's move that out of the way. And then I have a, some, <coughs> a piece of fluoride right there. Let's draw some acid on fluoride. And I think you can see that fluoride does not fizz an acid. Okay, now I have some crushed up pieces of mineral that I have right here. Okay, now. What I have right here is crushed up or powdered dolomite, and I'm going to drop some acid on that as well. Let's see what happens. And I'll go like this. Oh, you really can see that fizz quite well. So now, the powdered dolomite, you can see that that reacts. Now here I have some powdered fluorite. I'm going to move this just a little bit. I have some crushed up fluorite. And you see no reaction there. But you still see some reaction in dolomite. The fluorite never fizzes in acid. Dolomite, you see, didn't fizz as a solid, did fizz when crushed, and we'll get to why that is in a second. Now I'm going to add this in. Um, I'm going to add this part. This is some crushed up calcite. Now we saw the solid calcite a minute ago fizz. Now this is crushed calcite. Watch this. Put some acid on here. You see that fizz, huh? That fizzes like crazy, basically. It fizzes like crazy. You see a really strong reaction. You see it fizz much more as when it's powdered than even as a solid. Now, why is that? Okay. So what we have here is um, so calcite fizzes in acid, but it fizzes as a solid. Dolomite doesn't fizz as a solid. I'll bring that back. It doesn't fizz like this. Um, but you did see it when it was a powder. Basically, and you, there's no way to really know this, dolomite as a solid has a very, very small reaction with acid. Very small. You can't see it here. You can't see it at all. But when it was powdered, you, now you can see that reaction a lot more. And the reason for that is because when I powder it, I increase its surface area. Now here's a diagram to kind of show that. Okay. Let's say you start out with this big cube here. Okay. And the surface area, let's say exposed to the air in this case, are the six sides. But if you cut it like this, well now you increase the surface area that would be exposed to air in this case. This side and this side now are, uh, you increase the surface area. If you keep cutting it, now if you look, all the surfaces here that are exposed in, in all of these little cubes is a lot more. So when I have my solid dolomite, it's like this. When it's my crushed dolomite, now the um, I have much more surface area of the dolomite, and that increases the dolomite to acid contact. So the very small reaction that occurs when it's dropped on on this piece right here, the very small reaction that occurs that you can't see now when it's powdered, you can see it very dramatically because you have an increase in surface area. That is the reason why the calcite fizzed very much as a solid. Okay, so that, it does have a pretty strong reaction to 
acid as a solid. But when I powdered it, I increased its surface area, and then it's even a stronger reaction. And that's a good basic scientific concept that really you kind of use all the time. Now I have a few examples. I'm going to really just stick with one. And it doesn't deal with chemical reactions. It deals with evaporation. But you may have experienced this. Um, I'm going back to when I was a kid and I was a teenager. And I spent a lot of my time playing um, basketball outside, um, down at the schoolyard I played basketball. And after a rain there would often be puddles on the court. And of course the puddles were always right underneath the rim. Okay? Well I wanted to play basketball. There was a puddle there. Um, and I basically wanted it to go away. Now, what could I do to make that puddle evaporate faster? And I bet you're thinking of the answer right now. Well, I would walk down to the schoolyard with my basketball and my broom and my broom which I'm trying to get in focus and my broom and I would sweep out that puddle and I would increase its surface area and, and I would spread out that water and I would increase the surface area by 10 times often and what would happen is that puddle would evaporate in 15 minutes and I'd be ready to play as opposed to if that puddle, if I didn't increase that surface area, it would take half a day for that puddle to evaporate or more and that's just a simple example of how you increase surface area um, that you see in a daily life. Again, that wasn't so much a chemical reaction as it was a phase change uh, of evaporation, but uh, we see this all the time. So, the reason that uh, you see the fizzing on these minerals, and um, on the Earth Science Reference Table, where is it? Here we go. We have calcites right here, okay? And it says bubbles with acid and dolomite is right here and it says bubbles with acid when powdered and it means only when powdered and that's how you tell them apart really um, because they're hard to tell apart and that's really the best way so uh, thanks for watching again that was uh, a little bit on the fizzing of minerals and how that uh, is affected by surface area and uh, see you next time